Hello and welcome to week six in statistics for psychology. We have a big week this week. I'm looking at this and it's there's quite a lot to do here. So, but we are looking at some of the basic concepts related to descriptive statistics. When we have a set of data and we want to have sort of a sense of the characteristics of that particular data, then we're looking at some of these really basic measures, measures of central tendency, which is like middleness, averageness, that's one of them. So I don't want to use that in the definition, but sort of the typical sort of thing that's going on. And then we want to look at diversity in that data, how, how widespread it is. So these two chapters, chapters five and six, talk about central tendency, the middleness of things, and then variability the sort of diversity of things, looking at data. And these two measures are reported all over the field of psychology uh, when we're representing what our data looks like. So it's important at this basic level. We're going to be using these measures in the calculation of other statistical tasks. The central tendency and variance come up all the time. So as you learn about central tendency, what I'm going to have you do in the discussion is to research an article in the general audience category. That means in magazines, newspapers, websites, and whatever, not journals. Don't look up a journal. Look up statistics as it's used in the media and examine their use of any of the central tendency things. If they say the average or the median, they rarely go with the mode. That's the third one but you'll often see median and you'll often see average or mean and look at to see how that number represents that data. How much power do they put behind that number? In psychology, we learn that that's only part of the story. You have the average, but then there's the variance. I mean, if you think about it, if I had five people and their average income was $10,000 a year. That only tells me what the average is. When the, the actual variance in that could be, each one of them could be making 10,000, or you can have the one in the middle makes 10, and the other one makes 11, 12, and the other one makes nine, 8,000 on each side, and you would have that average. However, you could have one person making 10,000, one making, what would it be? 20,000, two making 20,000, and two making zero. And that data looks very different, even though the average would be the same. So let's look at this and how averages are presented in the media and what might be missing information. We understand, I hope you understand, the media is trying to convince you of something. As critical thinkers, we can say, okay, assuming that the convincing is not to throw you off, but to, you know, to, to, to support a message of some kind. Um, where is our critical thinking when it comes to looking at averages and other measures of central tendency, such as median? So that's the discussion. The quiz, this is probably one of the most difficult quizzes that I've ever put together. It is a deeply critical thinking, and critical thinking as it applies in this is you have to get your head wrapped around what you can say about nominal data. You have to study that deep to be able to answer these questions. So we're looking at medal counts in the Olympics. I ask some questions that if you don't really understand nominal data, it might be difficult for you to answer these questions. So I'm going to leave it at that. See what you do in terms of overstudying that particular topic. That'd be a good idea. In the assignment, I'm actually giving you the experience of looking at a huge database of numbers. And to exemplify how statistical software such as Excel renders that easy to work with. doesn't really matter how many individual data points there are. Excel can handle it. 
and we can easily apply statistics even though there might be thousands of numbers that we're dealing with. So I'm giving you that experience to look at descriptive data from a very large data set. It's the same process as if you had only five samples. You just go through the descriptive statistics test that's in our plugin and you go from there. We next change, we have central tendency. Now we have variance. Now understand when you do the descriptive statistics in our plugin, it includes all the measures of central tendency and variance are in that same result. That little table that you, it pulls out it actually gives you the results for both of this chapter. In the discussion, again, pulling away a little bit from the uh, regular use of statistics, but focusing on the notion of diversity, if, well, in this case, diversity of opinion, a diversity of thought, diversity of experience, and how that shapes the way we view the world. And imagine you're with a number of people and that the, those people coming together have to make a decision. Would it be better to have people who are relatively aligned not a whole lot of diversity? Or would it be better to have a group of people with wide diverse opinions on something in terms of your predicted outcomes of the quality of the decision? And tell me why. As arguments for both, the discussion is for you to kind of look at that from the perspective of if I was a manager trying to make good decisions, how would I want to compose that group I'm bringing together in order to come to the best decision possible? And then we turn to the assignment, which again, similar to when you were doing ranges, you may have to look up some YouTube videos to get your head wrapped around. I do give an example of all the, all the variance statistic variability statistics I want you to get. Some are built into the plugin, some you have to use you have to use the formulas for. I give you a small set of data. You put that into Excel and you'll be reporting out the range, the variance if this is a sample, and the variance if this is a population. There's a little bit of difference there if you're thinking this is everybody or if this is just a sample. The same for standard deviation. That's another measure of variability. And then we'll look at sample and population. And then we're looking at the interquartile range. And this is essentially the bottom 25%, the top 25%, and the two middle, the upper middle, lower middle, 25%. You'll often see statistics reported out using, this is quartile, but you, they'll report out the top 10% or the top 25% or the top 1%. These are all ways in which we take all the figures and we look, you know, what if we had 1% groups, what's the 1%? What, what is the range? What is the, the bottom figure and the top figure that represents these scores that are in that top 1%, or in this case, the scores that are in the top 25%. And then you're doing the descriptive statistics. Now, a little clue, almost all of these, the range, variance, standard deviation, happen when you do the descriptive statistics. But I also want you to produce the central tendencies within that assignment as well. So you're carrying over that. You're, the first test you probably should do is the descriptive because that's going to be the one that's going to give you the range, variances, standard deviations. Do that. Report that all out. And I want you to put in a text box. I don't want you just to put the, the answers there. I want you to, in a text box, I want you to do a verbal description of it. Just, just write it out in sentences. You know, the average is this. The the, um, if this was a population, the standard deviation is this, you know, going through each one of those expectations in the, in a text box where your data is. So a little bit of, of working out that and, and getting, um, a little bit in tune with the idea of not just presenting the numbers, which are impressive enough, but then converting that back to English and telling people what, what am I pointing out here? Don't, don't, don't make people look in the table and try and figure out, you'll say, okay, 
measures were taken related to stress level, blah, everything that's in the description of that assignment, you know, and the mean was this, the mode was this, the median was this, you know, and, and you talk about those using English. Whenever you're looking at a, a research article, you'll see tables with that information, but then you see a paragraph describing the table. So they repeat that information both visually in the table, you can take it in a very good glance, and then a verbal explanation of that data. So kind of a big week, get started early, reach out if there's any issues that you have, but certainly if you run into a trouble, not that I don't like hearing from people and I love helping people, and that's perfectly fine, there's tons of videos about this stuff on, on YouTube. Uh, look at the examples that I provide, experiment things, uh, persist at it within Excel until you see the results that you're expecting. So, uh, and, and look at those results critically. If something seems really off, it might be. There might be a little calculation problem or something like that. So important to, uh, to check your work that way, even though it pops up and it looks 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 good make sure that average makes sense you know from your logical sense of looking at that distribution if you have a distribution of numbers and you have an average of 4020 on those numbers something went wrong something went wrong they think the top number is like 75 or something like that okay so that's this week lots of things to do you're all doing really well things are going i'm really really happy with what's going on and uh, here we are in week six, and have a great week, be cool, and I will see you next time.